in the wonderful name of our, in the wonderful name of our soon coming savior, Jesus Christ. I'm greeting you today from a different platform and I'm, I'm struggling with the lights, but um, hopefully you can hear my voice very clearly. Um, without any further ado, uh, Pastor Poswa, may you please take the platform and um, we are here to listen to the word of God. Amen. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much, uh, my sister. And uh, may God bless us as we meet together this morning. And I am also struggling with light. I ask for your forgiveness for that. I am in a different environment uh, than my own home, where I have my own um, things that I use for lighting and the likes. And uh, also, I'm also a dark person. If you can see the darker part is my face more than anything. So that when uh, it's a blessing from the Lord, I cannot take it away. <clears throat> All right. Um, today we're continuing, we're finishing the first angel's message. And uh, the Bible says, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. And we will be looking there at verses uh, six and seven. The Bible says here, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation, kindred, people, saying with a loud voice, <clears throat> loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him that made heaven and earth the sea, and the fountains of waters. So the Bible here calls on us to worship the creator. The Bible calls us to worship the creator. Now you will remember that the book of Revelation in chapter 13 speaks a lot about worship. The word worship is used um, eight times. And in the eight times that it is used, it is not preferred. It is referring to the beast or the image of the beast. Are we together, friends? So this is very important, the message and the call to worship the creator. Now, it is interesting to note that in, in the Bible, also even in the book of Revelation, if you look at um, Revelation, for example, chapter 4 and verse 11, this is what the Bible says in chapter 4, verse 11. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So here the Bible tells us very clear that God deserves to be worshipped. Why? Because he created. What separates God from all the other so-called gods? that are worshipped by other nations is the fact that God has created. If you look with me in Psalm 95, for example, you'll find this spoken of again in verse 6. The Bible says, oh, let us come and worship, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Now, once again, worship is connected here with God creating and in Psalm 96 the next Psalm but also but now verse 5 it says for all the gods of the peoples are idols but the Lord made the heavens all the gods of the nations are idols but the Lord made the heavens so once more the fact that God has created is mentioned here as the reason why we should worship him so god created us as his children and this is a reminder again that god has created us in his image are we together remember this is the everlasting gospel that is being preached here saying fear god give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and the plan of redemption uh, one of its chief purposes is to bring us back to the original state in our creation to bring men back to the image of his maker is the plan of redemption. And it is the plan of education 
as we learn in the book Education and the Great Purpose of Life. So here we see very clearly that the fact that God is creator is mentioned as the reason why we should worship him. And in light of the gospel, it is to remind us that God actually created us so that we can reflect his image. All right, friends, and not reflect the image of the beast. Now, one thing that is that you will note in this verse where it says, um, worship, uh, uh, worship him that created the heaven and earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. The language is very similar to the language that is used in the fourth commandment. Remember the fourth commandment says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy men servant, nor thy man, maid servant, nor thy ox, um, sorry, my phone rang, <laughs> excuse me. The Bible tells us that um, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy men servant nor thy maid servant. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, um, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, where, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So the Bible tells us very clearly here that we are to rest and keep the Sabbath holy because in it, God rested. Now, it's interesting that the same language created heaven and earth, the sea, and so on and so forth is used here. So the Bible gave, or God in the Ten Commandments gave us the Sabbath commandment to remind us the fact that God is the one who created us in his image, that God created everything that we see that God is the one who is our creator. So the Sabbath was given as a memorial of creation. That is why after God created in six days, he rested on the seventh day, not because he was tired, but because he actually wanted to set this day aside, to sanctify it for holy purpose and to bless it so that man can rest on that day and remember that he was created, not that he, he came through a process of evolution, but that man is God's masterpiece and that we were created in his image. This is why the Sabbath commandment is very important, friends. It reminds us that we come from the hand of God. Now, this is why for the Jews, the Sabbath was actually kept in mind that the Sabbath was very prominent. Actually, in Ezekiel, God said, moreover, I gave them my Sabbath, that they may be a sign between me and them, that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. That's what it says in chapter 20, verse 12 of Ezekiel. And again, it says, and um, oh, I gave them, them my Sabbath that they may be a sign between me and them, that they may know that I am Jehovah or I am Yahweh, their God. So once again, God says that he gave the Sabbath sign to the children of Israel. So the way that you could tell the difference between the Jews and all the gods of the nations was that they were keeping the Sabbath holy, which was reminding them that they were not worshiping an idol, that they were not worshiping a creature, but they were actually worshiping the creator God. So here, the difference was set up between them and the nation's friends. Isn't it interesting that we are living in a time that uh, so is bombarding upon us and upon our children that we were not created by God, but we came about through a process of, um, uh, of evolution, friends. This is Interesting that at a time when God is actually calling his people to worship him as creator of the world, is actually calling people to behold evolution, to actually believe 
that uh, we took billions and billions of years through a process of trial and error, through a process of evolution, through a process of death and destruction to get where we are. But the Bible tells us that we came from the creator's hand. We did not happen by a mistake that we were created in the image of God, not just to survive and destroy anything in the process of survival, but so that we could reflect that image of our creator. This is the difference, friends, between those who worship the creator and those who do not, friends. Now, this message also reminds us of something. The Bible tells us something about God. It says, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. This is in Psalm chapter 33 and, 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 and verse 6. Now, in verse 9, the Bible says, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. So the message to worship the creator reminds us of the power of God's word because God spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. All the wonderful things that we see in the world were created by the, by, by the word. All the wonderful things that we see in space were created by the word. All the wonderful things that we see in the skies, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all these heavenly bodies, the Bible tells us very clearly that they were created by God through his word. Praise the Lord that God created through his word. So the fact that God created also reminds us of the power of the word of God. Now, what is the connection between the word of God that God used to create the heavens and the earth and our salvation. Now, Peter actually says being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the same word that created the heavens and the earth, the same words the same word by which God spoke and it was done, he commanded it and it stood fast, is the same exact word that God uses to recreate us into his image because the Bible tells us that we are created in Christ Jesus. So the born again experience is a process of recreation, friends. The Bible tells us that we are created uh, in Christ Jesus unto good works. And the Bible tells us that God uses his word to actually create us anew into his image. We are born again through this word. So the work of recreation is a supernatural work. It is the work of God's word recreating us in his image. The same power that said, let there be light. The Bible says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And by the way, friends, the same word by which God created the world is the same word, same word by which all things consist, according to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, and according to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. It is the same word by which everything holds together. And friends, isn't it curious that it is by the same word that our spiritual life is sustained? The same wor word that holds together the universe is the same word that actually holds our spiritual life together. Therefore, friends, we cannot survive. We cannot live without this word. That's why Jesus said when he faced the devil in the wilderness that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So friends, when we remember the creator, when we worship the creator, we remember that God gave us the Sabbath 
to set aside, to spend time with him, to worship him and to bask in his presence and to receive all the blessings that he has set aside on the Sabbath day. This is the word, it is the reminder to worship God. It reminds us, the Sabbath reminds us that as our creator, God created us in his image to reflect his image, friends. It reminds us the, of the power of God's word, that as the word of God was spoken to create the world, the word of God is spoken to create us anew into the image of God once again. It reminds us of the power of God's word, not only to recreate us into his image, but also to sustain us in our Christian life, to keep us in our Christian life. And friends, isn't it curious? that Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In the Bible, when it speaks about the Sabbath, as we read in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12, that God says, moreover, I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctifies them. The Sabbath is not only reminding us that God created us. The Sabbath also reminds us that it is God who saves us and not ourselves. Friends, in Exodus, in the Ten Commandments version in Exodus chapter 20, the Bible focuses on the fact that the Israelites were to keep the Sabbath because it reminded them that God created them. But it is interesting that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5, in the Ten Commandments as it is given there, that when God gives the Sabbath commandment, he reminds the children of Israel that God is actually the one who took them out of the slavery of Egypt and brought him them to himself so that God is the one who saved them. And we know through many different references in the New Testament, the Exodus experience was a type of redemption. It was this type of salvation from sin, from the slavery of sin to the freedom that is found in Jesus Christ. And the rest that we experience on the Sabbath, the physical rest and the rest from all other things is to remind us to rest in God that we, do not, we are not saved through our own works. We are not to depend upon what we can do. When we rest on Sabbath and say, you know what? I will not rest. I am going to rest. I am going to depend upon my God. It is a reminder, friends, that even in our salvation, we are not to rest in our, we are not to depend upon our own works, but we are to rest in God and the work that he has done for us on Calvary through Jesus and the work that he is constantly doing in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So our life is not only a life of rest on the Sabbath, but the Sabbath is the reminder of the daily rest that we are to have of resting in the grace of God and not depending upon our own efforts and not depending upon our own struggling to obey God, but to depend upon the power of God working in us to depend upon the spirit working in us to depend upon the grace of God working in our hearts strengthening us and enabling us to carry on the work of God in our own lives this call to worship God is a call to rest because we are worshiping a God who calls us to rest in him and to rest in his grace and not to depend upon our own works but to remind to be reminded that it is not by might nor by power but it is by the spirit of god god's word is the one that is creating us in god's image this is the word that is sustaining us and keeping us this word reminds us that god is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The call to worship God is the call to Sabbath keeping, to seventh day Sabbath keeping, but not only to seventh 
seventh day Sabbath keeping, but to Sabbath experience throughout the week, an experience of restfulness in his grace. We are reminded to come to Jesus and to find rest. May God help you. May God help me. May God help us to find this rest in Jesus and to rest in his grace and to experience the power of his word and of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us to worship you. We have seen, Lord, that you as our creator separates you from any other idol that is worshipped as a God. But the Sabbath was given to keep in our hearts and in our minds. He did not come, did not come through a process of evolution, but we came because we were created by the almighty God who created us in his image. The Sabbath is there to remind us of the power of your word, which is the same word by which we are born again. That your word is able to sustain us as it has sustained for these thousands of years the world and the universe that you have created. That your word and your Sabbath remind us to not depend on our own works and what we can do, but to depend fully on your grace and find runs and in your grace. And that this word reminds us that the Sabbath experience is not only to be on the seventh day of the week, but it is to be an experience of restfulness in your grace each day of the week. Oh, Father, help us to worship you. Help us to bow down before the Lord, our maker. To not be fearful of anything, because we know that we serve an almighty God, that we serve an all-powerful God, that we serve a God who create, can create something out of nothing. Yes, it may seem in our hearts to be all darkness and void, but you are able to speak light into our hearts. You are able to shine light out of darkness into our hearts. May we have that experience of your light constantly shining in our hearts, dispelling every visage of darkness in us so that that light can emanate and reflect through us so that your glory may be seen in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Bless your children today. Shine your light upon them. Dispel every form of darkness that they may be experiencing right now. Dispel any doubt that they may have of their worth, Lord. May they be reminded today that you are the one who created them in your own image. They are coming from your hand. They have an infinite value because they were created by an infinite God. May they be reminded that the same God who rested on the Sabbath after creating also re rested on the Sabbath after the work of redemption was completed on the cross. And their worth is an infinite worth because they were worthy for you to die for them. If there's any doubt in anyone's mind who is listening to this prayer, may you instill that sense of self-worth, not found in self, but found in Christ. If we were enough for you to die for us, then we are of infinite value. May you dispel any visage of worthlessness that is any, in any of your children who are listening to this message and who are listening to this prayer. May we all know of the value that we have because we come from your hand and because we were redeemed by Jesus' blood. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing us. Thank you for this wonderful time. May you continue to bless us as we pray to you. Hearken unto our prayers, and may you show thyself strong on our behalf. Thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer, for we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.